myself to have teachers in my life who were dharmic, meaning they had ethics and morals on board, um, who shared apt teachings, meaning the teachings were right, um, and were able to share those teachings in a way that was profoundly transformative and illuminative for me. Um, it's because of those teachers that I am able to do what I do and that I'm able to discern uh, other teachers and understand the difference between uh, charisma and intelligence versus actual wisdom and depth. I also have had two uh, fairly long-term relationships with teachers who were um, cultish and manipulative. And while I never personally fell prey to their um, manipulations and abuses, I learned a great deal from witnessing um, other people falling prey to that and have worked with a number of students and clients to help them recover from those experiences. Um, and I wanna say that it's very confusing out there. The more content is out there uh, with all the different lines of content access that we now have, um, the more confusing it is. And that this is not a black and white issue. Um, there are good teachers who are imperfect. <laughs> there are bad teachers who seem perfect. Um, there are teachers who sound smart, who appear to have authority or have authoritative uh, personality types uh, giving distorted teachings. Um, and there are people giving distorted teachings who have good hearts and are well-intentioned, but they don't know that they're giving distorted teachings. Okay, so... Um, what we are going to watch out for are teachers who fall into a few kind of categories. One is that they're intelligent. So these are problematic teachers. One type is that they're intelligent and they give at least some or even predominantly accurate information, but they lack the ability to transmit the wisdom in a way that is meaningful and personal uh, and transformational, okay? So this is actually described in the yoga tradition and um, is described as a, as a type of teacher that you want to uh, avoid or want to not go very deep with. They give mostly accurate information but not meaningful personalized transformation. Okay, these people will sound very intelligent. They often will have an academic background and um, what they're saying may be by the book, but isn't a real vehicle for you to undergo uh, meaningful change in your life or in your work. Okay, so the next uh, sort of category of problematic teacher is that they have a lot of charisma, uh, popularity, maybe they've published some books or have a popular blog, uh, that kind of thing in modern terms. Um, they may have really good business sense or a marketing team, but they actually do not know what they're talking about. All right, so this much charisma, this much knowledge. All right, so we wanna watch out for that. Um, there are teachers who are half-baked, and a lot of these people don't know that they're half-baked, so that is problematic. They are well-meaning, they have good hearts, they have good intentions and some of what they say is right, and a lot of what they say is a distortion. It may be that they got the distortion themselves from books or from other teachers who didn't know what they were talking about, and they just wanna share with the world what they learned, but what they learned or what they think they learned is not right. Okay, so half-baked teachers. And then finally, we really wanna watch out for teachers that are unethical and potentially uh, dangerous or can cause harm. They could um, psychologically cause harm to their students or physically cause harm to students um, or cause harm by leading students astray uh, with severely distorted teachings, okay? So watch out for teachers who are unethical and potentially dangerous. Even if the danger is psychological, that is a real danger. So what to do? I don't have a perfect formula, but here's a list of about 10 means for discerning teachers, okay, or investigating. So the first is take your time. Take your time to investigate a teacher. The next is trust your gut instinct. All right, but also know that sometimes what seems and feels like intuition can be your desire and fear. So don't choose a teacher when you're full of fear 
um, or full of, of desire that's rooted in a sense of neediness. Fear and desire are natural human experiences, but ideally don't make a decision from that place um, or confuse fear and desire with intuition. If you can differentiate your fears and your desires from your intuition, then go ahead and trust your gut instinct, okay? Now, the next one, number three, this is pretty basic and um, a lot of people know to do this, luckily, and that is look at their bio. And what you're looking for is that they name teachers. Now remember, I'm specifically talking about yoga philosophy, which rests on the teacher-student relationship, okay, as a vehicle for transmission and transformation. So if they're claiming to teach something traditional with cultural roots, particularly yogic philosophy teachings, they must have at least one teacher of that subject, all right? This is not a tradition that's based on books. Books are an important supplement and the teacher will use texts, okay? But books alone are not a means of knowledge according to the yoga tradition, okay? Um, the knowledge is based on the student, the teacher, and the text. So a teacher alone is also not enough. You need texts, you need a teacher, and you need the student. The student themselves is also primary, all right? So what we're looking for in the bio is the naming of a teacher who's taught them in this subject if they're teaching philosophy. And um, they need to name a teacher with uh, expertise in the specific field. In other words, if they list asana teachers and anatomy teachers, but then are offering a yoga philosophy program, that's a red flag. Where did they learn what they're teaching? Okay, from whom? The next, number four, get referrals from people you trust, including other teachers. Okay, so ask your teachers, I want to study such and such, do you know of someone? Or I'm thinking of studying with so-and-so, do you know anything about them? Or could you take a look for me? Do you think that this teacher is apt or dharmic? All right. A teacher can tell very quickly, a good teacher can tell very quickly about other teachers. And a good teacher doesn't feel a sense of ownership over the student, won't say, oh no, you can't study with other teachers. All right, will happily let you know about other teachers in the field offering something of value. Okay, next. Uh, we're looking at ethics. Is the teacher ethical? Do they have dharma on board? Okay, that's number five. Number six is investigate or talk to other people who have studied with that teacher. Ask them, not only did you, not, did you like them, are they likable? That's not the concern. Ask what did you learn? What did you gain? What in your life or work or mind was transformed in a meaningful way by studying with this person? Number seven is you're gonna look at the demographics of the students of the person who's teaching. If they are all very similar, all young or immature or green, that's a red flag, okay? Nothing against young people, but a good teacher, an apt teacher and a dharmic teacher will actually have students that are of a range of ages and demographics. Um, if it's yoga philosophy, this is number eight, they must have good Sanskrit pronunciation or decent Sanskrit pronunciation. That's non-negotiable. Um, and number nine, watch for teachings that sound overly academic and complicated. All right, these teachings are very theoretical um, and not really lived or truly understood in a deep heart-centered way, which is where these teachings are meant to abide is in the shrine of the heart, not solely in the head. So watch out for overly complicated teachings. Um, teachers that are solely theoretical and academic can't respond to in the moment questions in a meaningful personal way. They don't have applied wisdom, they have information, which can be alluring, but dry and two-dimensional and potentially harmful. Number 10, this is the last one, the best is to actually have a good teacher to begin with and dive in deep with that teacher and what you learn from that teacher will become your own bullshit meter that you can take with you for the rest of your life.